Oh. <laughs> oh my. Hello. Oh, it's good to see you. I'm Chris. It's it's. Every time I see your face, look at this. Look at this smile and laughter and joy that I feel when I see your beautiful complexion. It's, uh, how, do, how do I describe it? It's kind of like, um, you know what, it's just like if, wait, let's get this fan down. That's better. I'll put it just on my feet because my toes are freezing. It's, it's kind of like if you had a great big bowl of like, I don't know, frosted flakes or, um, or rice bubbles or something. And, um, like that big bowl, milk and cereal, and you just took out the cereal and made the milk skin colored. Today, hopefully, it's going to be a quick one. I'm aiming for a quick one today, a quick video. It never happens. But, I'm going to try. So, I'm going to start off with some really simple, 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 like zoomed in examples and then slow and then bring it out. Bring it out to the big picture, that zoomed out, large image of the overall integration of your life, I suppose, how it all sort of connects. Now, first example, it's, it's this idea of how how and why your intention matters um, with every little thing that you do and how it influences how you do, how you do it, what you do, to what extent, to what extent is um, enough, how far you're willing to go with achieving whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, and it, and it, it, is, it covers all things, but we'll get to that a bit later. I'm going to give you a few examples, as I said, simple ones, zoomed in surface level stuff. First example is one we've all encountered at some stage. That's someone who, like at work, at work, or maybe we're paying someone to do a service for us or whatever it might be. Now, it involves, so, blah, 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 blah. Imagine someone's working for, for a company. There's two main reasons why someone might want to do a good job. And they're both interconnected, but then I'm talking about the main driving force. Now, someone goes and does a job, so they spray paint a car, they're, they're painting a car. They could do a good job for one of two reasons. One, because their boss loves loves it when they do a good job and customers don't complain and um, maybe he'll get a raise out of it or something or or whatever you know there's some something about um, satisfying the boss satisfying the boss how does that even sound oh my gosh satisfy him I need to satisfy my boss. Anyway, the other reason why you might uh, that they might do a good job is because they um, they in themselves don't want to see that car again, and no knowing that they've done a crappy job, right? They want to be able to every time they see that car, they're gonna go. I did the best job I possibly could. And that customer's gonna be so happy with what I've done. And, um, or even if they don't see it again, they just know in themselves, I've done a great job. And that's awesome, and that makes me feel good, right? It's like a internal reason. They just wanna do it because that's sort of part of who they are. They're like, I'm the guy who takes pride in their work simply for the sake of the work. You can see that there are two levels to this. The bottom level um, is just doing it for someone else, doing it for the boss. 
to satisfy the boss. Oh, shush, you're not actually out of fuel. And the other one is to satisfy themselves. The reason why this version is that um, satisfying the boss is below satisfying yourself, just taking pride in your work and being happy that you've done a good job and all that sort of stuff. The reason why it's below that is because it incorporates satisfying the boss. If you're the type of person who does a, aims to do the best job and you've got a decent boss, um, then you know the boss is going to be happy anyway um, as a side effect of you taking pride in your work, right? So that's why it's below. It doesn't work the other way around. You know, you don't take pride in your work because you're doing a good job for your boss. You take pride in your work and then your boss is happy for it, right? Assuming he's not a dickhead who complains about how long you're taking and all that sort of stuff, which I've had, um, and that's not fun. So another example is uh, cleaning. Uh, e examples of why I've been motivated to clean up after myself in the past. As a child, I would only clean up um, when things got, when things inconvenienced me and it started to bother mum. <laughs> and mum would be like, Chris, clean your room. And I'll be like, fine then, I'll clean my room and then you'll stop nagging me. You know, <laughs> teenage Chris. That was the only motivator for cleaning my room, really. I mean, I'm like, she'd like, pick up your clothes off the floor. I'm like, but there's like a pathway to my bed. I don't even need to step on any clothes to get to my bed or my desk or any of that stuff. So why, why should I, like, I know where the clothes are. My t-shirt's over there. Some of my pants are there and some of my pants are over there. I can get to all my clothes. What's the practical reason? She said, please just do it for me. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it for you. Now, that's a weak, weak, weak um, reason to do something just for other people, right? Going back to the other one. I would, um, it, it would be filthy most of the time. Um, yes, I could find my clothes most of the time. Sometimes the clothes, though, they would get kicked under the bed by accident and I wouldn't find them until I do a big clean up with mum and then she'd have to, she'd always have to tidy up after me anyway. And um, yeah, I was a pig of a kid, right? So there's that. Next level up, I would start tidying up because it inconvenienced me. As I acquired more stuff, I had less and less floor space. So, wait, just just um, going back to that last one. Uh, when I was tidying up for other people, my house would get, uh, my room would get filthy, and then I'd get told to clean, and it would get clean. Or it would get filthy, and I'd be like, oh my, mum's gonna tell me off, I better tidy it up before she gets on my case, because I hate it when she gets on my case, blah, blah, blah. So it would get really, really bad, and then it would get a little bit better. It would get just clean enough so that she wouldn't be bothered, so that she wouldn't nag me to clean it. I would do no further than that, right? Next level up is I started to realize that it inconveniences me, right? So I'd start to realize, oh, clothes get lost under the bed. And so I can't find them because as I got more and more uh, material possessions in my room, got a TV, I got this, I got that, I uh, got a bigger bed, this, you know, whatever. I had less space to actually um, um, to, to put clothes on the floor. I had less floor space. So I'd start walking on my clothes and if I, I don't know, that would walk dirt onto the clothes and um, and I'd be like, okay, well, maybe I'll tidy up a little bit. And I'd put away some of my clothes 
when the floor space got to a point where um, I couldn't walk around without stepping on clothes, right? If they were dirty, I didn't care, right? The clean clothes would be the only ones that I would put in the in the drawers and the cupboards and all that sort of stuff. So it would be cleaner than normal and it would get cleaned a little bit more frequently, but it was still filthy. Now, I'm only now in my 30s. Uh, obviously, over the years, I've gotten tidier than that. I don't, I don't leave clothes on the floor anymore. My room is tidy, blah, blah, blah. But I still will do things like um, when I'm working in the garage, I'm going to use that tool really soon. Uh, I'm going to use that tool tomorrow, so why bother putting it away? It's a terrible habit of mine, and it, the same goes for, um, I got a glass that I drink water out of. Um, I always go for that glass when I'm thirsty. I'll grab that glass and, and drink out of it, right? And I'll, I'll rinse it out and drink the water. That's a bad habit as well, because now I've got a glass. I've got glasses sitting around in my living room. Like, why not just, like, put them away? And then I've got a, I've got more space to put um, dishes and things. I've got other things, little trinkets and stuff that are sitting on my coffee table that shouldn't be there. So, but they don't really, really, really inconvenience me. So the next paradigm up above that is tidying up after myself because it's gross to have a messy space right just because it's gross like looking at that space and going I don't like the way it looks and I'm sure other people don't like the way it looks but I want to do it tidy it up because I don't think it looks very good now this is the new paradigm I'm trying to train myself and I'm getting I'm getting results pretty quickly um, I've got a few little techniques on my sleeve it's sad that I have to use techniques but it, I, I don't know I don't um, my house isn't filthy but it's not as tidy as I'd like for various reasons so now that the top paradigm is just doing it because for me because I look at it and I go I don't like the look of it I think it's gross um, dishes in the sink um, clean dishes on the table, on, the, on my coffee table. That's gross. Like, from this paradigm, can you see that, and can you see that I'd be cleaning up, I clean up more frequently, I clean up, I actually do a better job because now instead of just cleaning to the point of uh, convenience, or because, well, if I was at home because it was inconveniencing other people uh, and or annoying people or people getting on my case about stuff or whatever, instead of trying to do it for that reason, I'm actually doing a better job. I'm cleaning up more thoroughly. And also I'm, um, I'm doing it more frequently because every time I walk past it, I'm like, ah, oh, there's that glass again. Ah, oh, well, there's a bowl. It's... It's got crumbs on it. I really should wash that up. I'm going to wash that up because I don't want to be gross. And then I can integrate that into my personality and be like, I don't want, I'm not the type of person who likes seeing gross stuff around my house. Right? So, and you can see how each paradigm has a side effect where it helps the paradigm underneath. Right? Um, and it's like intrinsically linked with if I'm a tidy person, well, then other people aren't going to be bothered by my untidiness because I'm not untidy. Uh, if I'm a tidy person, then everything will be where I expect it to be. So it'll be, and I'll have more space to do stuff. Um, you can see how each, each level underneath helps. So now that's, that's the surface level stuff, but it's all connected, right? And there are things that on the bottom level, um, you're doing all these little things, but where's the place it's coming from? 
how does how do your your um, why do you interact with other people? Why do you um, work hard at your job? How does your um, your motivations for doing things influence, like, say, um, your social life? Are you just trying to get them to do things for you or whatever? Or are you trying to, um, um, or are you just doing it because you enjoy people's company, right? A really good example of that is uh, a creepy dude trying to pick up a chick, right? If he's just trying to get into her pants, most women can pick up on that and be like, you're creepy. I, they may not even be able to stay, they may not even say what it is that's bothered, bothering them about this guy, but they can just feel it. Whereas if a guy is just chatting to them and they're both having a good time, they're just having a laugh, guess what? They're gonna be friends, they're gonna like vibe, you know? Maybe he'll get lucky, maybe he'll make a friend, maybe um, he'll, um, he'll get a girlfriend, who knows? But if he's coming from that different place, she's just gonna be more comfortable and she's gonna love it, right? Maybe she's, um, she's, uh, works for a company that's gonna employ, who's about to employ a whole bunch of people doing a really fun job with really good pay. You know what I mean? Then she can just go, ah, oh, you seem like a really good fit. Like his initial intention might have been to pick her up or just to have a good time or just laugh or whatever. And then it's led into um, a career, right? So this is how, you know, relationships can lead into this or they could, um, maybe she knows um, how to achieve a thing that you're trying to do. Uh, maybe they give you a new insight onto a concept that you've never really thought of it like that right all these things are linked in unusual ways so and you know if a person feels like you're trying to take 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 from them if you're coming from a taking place then yes they're gonna some people are gonna pick up on that and it's not gonna do you any favors right so and this expands out to every single aspect in your life every single aspect of your life the place it comes from actually does matter because it sub communicates on an unconscious level using your body language your vocal tonality your the way your eyes move around in your sockets right everything gets affected by um the unconscious place that is driving you to do what you're trying to do, right? So, intent, that's why intention matters. And knowing, and here's the big, big, big zoomed out picture. You can do things from a place simultaneously knowing and taking for granted that all these other things are gonna happen as a side effect of you doing things from this place. I know that because I'm friendly and, and nice to people, um, I've made a lot of friends. I've had, I've, I got employment at the place I'm working for now where I'm super happy for, to work there. I, I got this employment because I'm into speakers. I'm doing pest control and possum proofing be, for the company that I'm working for right now because I'm into speakers, right? That's the reason why I've even got offered this position, right? Jeez, I can't see anything. I don't think there's any cars coming. Let's just sneak forward. Now, how does that make sense? How can a hobby like that um, lead to that? Do you know what I mean? Like. Right? Try to put those two pieces together. So, and it's because I was passionate about speakers. 
and I seem to know what I'm doing when I'm talking about speakers and I know how to fabricate and I'm passionate about this and that's why I'm employed at the place I'm currently employed at. So that's why intention actually matters, right? This video is 10 minutes longer than I was expecting but I think I've covered everything and hopefully you can get a glimpse into this overarching um, principle that is how um, everything is affected by everything else and why intention matters on an unconscious level and how that, you know, people use, hippies use words like vibes and all this. It's not, an, it's not a physical vibe as such. It's just your unconscious mind picking up on other people's um, unconscious communications and going, yes, I agree with that. I'm in alignment with that. Or no, that person is rubbing me the wrong way. I can't put my finger on it. There's just a creepy vibe that uh, they're, 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 um, they're radiating out. Okay? So, yeah, that's that. Um, try to notice it in yourself. Try to notice it in other people. Like, actually zoom in on, on asking yourself, what do you think their intention is? And then seeing how that portrays in the way they look. A lot of anxious people are just worried about people not liking them. And so they sort of portray this vibe of, um, please like me, please like me, please like me. And in a way, please like me, is a taking vibe. It's a taking, like it's a needy, needy, takey, whatever you want to say, you know, um, versus someone who's like comfortable because they're like, I know I'm going to be able to give to this, um, experience. I know how to give to this communication and all that sort of thing. And I know that I'm going to be able to build up, build up, build up, build up. And, um, I'm not going to be taking and then people are like, yeah, I'm going to get the other people are going to be like, yeah, I get to take from this person. I get to take all this positive energy and, and laughter and, and confidence that they're not going to fuck up because when you're, when people just want to be liked, they're just like, please don't. <laughs> anyway, I think you guys get the point of this. So that's that. Have a great day. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you've noticed and all this sort of crazy, crazy stuff. And I will see you in the next video. What is a cat? Bye. Keep that cereal complexion.